done, I think this is like the 50th, or the 51st. It's like, it's like a year long that I've been doing this. And to this day, every time I click start broadcast, like the anxiety shoots through the roof, like the heart, like it goes and like the gut and like the palms. Like I feel it a little too. So, right? It's like, like you and I, we've gone live before. You gave a speech at the mastermind, which everybody said, like, oh my God, that was amazing. There's no reason for this nervousness to kick in, but it just does. Like, it's I know. And it, it's just you and I, too. That's what the weird thing. Like, right? like there's, there's nobody else in the room, and we're talking shop. Like, this is the, the stuff we're good at talking about. But I did want to say, by the way, like, when you came to, uh, what was like Hollywood, Florida, or South Florida, or something like that, like you, like you from Texas, like it, it was not only like really, really cool putting like a face, the body and all that stuff, but it was even cooler seeing you up in front of like 30 people all wearing butt shirts. And you're like, Hey guys, this is how I went zero to hundred K a month because like, like you and I started, you were at zero. Like if you can do it, like, like anybody can do this stuff. Right. Mm -hmm, exactly. I think that's so darn awesome. I'm getting people saying I need to turn up my mic. And I have no idea what that means. Uh, let's see if that does it. If not, I can always like shrink it down and switch mics. But Jeff, you can hear me, right? I can hear you just fine. Yeah. All right, cool. Um, but yeah, dude, it was so cool seeing you. And like, like Plus Plus has grown and your reputation has grown. And now you've got like a staff. Like, I think that's so cool. So for everybody who isn't sure, like where you've been and what you've done, let's just say they haven't seen like your first interview. Like, can mm -hmm. you give like just the basic info? Absolutely. Yeah. If I start to go into too much or too little, definitely let me know. But um, we're actually right about a year. Um, I really started my agency journey like February 13th of last year. I got my first client. But before that, um, you know, I'd ran some businesses, um, cell phone kiosks and malls, cell phone repair stores all over the place. Yep. Uh, very successful with that. Um, started doing consulting for an international company, started traveling around uh, on their budget, which was really cool. Um, got to the point I got tired of traveling because I was never home. Decided that, you know, I want to do something completely different. The weird thing is I kind of fell into uh, music. I got a celebrity personal trainer in Houston um, so, so I could get in, you know, cool with the, the music people there in Houston. They invited me out to the studio, fell in love with, you know, just the whole thing. Um, long story short, I wanted to become a rapper. Yeah, I think, I you know, that. <laughs> I feel like, you know, half the people in the world want to do some sort of music, something. Um, so I pursued that for a little bit. Um, for music standards, that went pretty well, you know, considering how little um, time I had been pursuing that. I did make a pretty good wave in the music scene, um, but it was just not the lifestyle that I wanted to live. Literally had to worry about um, the studio that I opened. It, it got shot at three different times. Yeah. Um, just I was putting my life on the line, literally. Um, and, you know, it just wasn't worth the pay. Like it was the least amount of money I've ever made in my life. And it was like the highest risk thing I've ever done. I was literally painting one day in uh, the front studio room and had bullets ripped through the wall, like right beside me. Yeah. And, you know, just knew that day that I was like, I got to do something else. I'm good at business. I'm good at consulting, you know, taking small businesses and, you know, really what I call plus plusing their business now. Uh, I didn't have that term back then, but uh, <laughs> but that, that's, that's what I was good at. And then I was like, but I don't like to travel. I don't like to be, you know, in the car, in the plane all day, every day. Let's take this to the internet. Started doing a little bit of research on, you know, what I could do on the internet to make money. Um, and actually there was this guy I don't know if I mentioned this before. There's this gentleman that lived at the condos where I lived in Houston before I got evicted um, by the name of Wes. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows him, but Wes, uh, million dollar virgin, Wesley Virgin. Um, he is pretty big in the uh, internet marketing world, but he had every new car you could think of. When the new Ferrari came out and he was like, man, you know, I make my money on the internet. And at that time, like I was doing fine with what I was doing. I didn't want to learn anything else. So I didn't take it seriously. Fast forward a few years tired of the studio life, start researching how to make money on the internet. Dan Henry and his reputation and his amazing budget retargeted me like 10 trillion times with ads <laughs> and kind of, you know, I got on his webinar, got sold on the whole local lead gen for Facebook ads and really just consumed every piece of content that I could, um, you know, so I could learn that. And I was like, you know what, I'm good at talking to businesses. Man, I, if he can do 10K a month, 100K a month, I'm going to blow this thing out the water. Um, so I took the old school approach. I'm like, you know, I didn't know how to work the internet yet. Um, I started going knocking on doors of businesses. I started with, you know, people that I knew. They were like, eh, no, you know, they don't know how Facebook ads works. And I wasn't, I, you know, I wasn't enough, I guess, confident enough to be able to sell them on, you know, how good of an idea it was. 
started literally going knocking door to door. Every freaking chiropractor in Houston at least saw me once knocking on their door. You know, I didn't get any business from that. Uh, and actually, the first person that I went to was like the chiropractor I was going to. So I was like, this would be easy. This would be a layup. You know, I've been giving him my money. He's been treating me. Uh, and I go in there, I have my little binder. I have a little plus plus client's shirt on. Oh, you. Oh, did we lose you? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> uh, okay, you're back. Oh, you're gone. <laughs> I don't understand what's happening. You're in the middle of your, can you hear me or no? I can hear you now. You left, came back twice. This doesn't make any sense. Why is my camera? Oh God, I hate be live. All right. Uh -oh. did, did we miss anything? Ah, you're gone again. I don't, there we go. Look, it's not your fault. This is the second time be live has done that, but your audio never turned off. You're okay, cool. Okay, so I'll, I'll go back to, um, so the part I, I was really confident I was going to land this chiropractor because I've been seeing him, I've been paying him money. Those are usually easy relationships to, you know, hey, I'm doing this and at least get some sort of interest. But I mean, I had a shirt made, said plus plus clients on there. I had a little black leather portfolio, walked in there with a little, little sheet to kind of show him what I had. I start telling him about it. Literally the words that come out, he's, he's like, get this out of here. Like, you know, don't come here and try to sell me. Like, you know, get this bullshit out of here. And I'm just like, Wow, like, yep. you know, I didn't expect that coming. And the way I took that, like I walked out, that was the first person I tried to knock on their door because I thought it'd be easy. And, you know, I was like, well, can't get any worse than that. So <laughs> started going around, knocking on every restaurant's doors, uh, gyms, Cairo, got nowhere, like literally got nowhere. And by this time I was putting, you know, about 70% of my time into this and really trying to wean off like doing the music. So money was real tight. Like it even got to the point where um, my, I lost my girlfriend at the time. Like she broke up with me because I was doing so bad. And you know that when you don't have money, you can't take care of anybody, let alone yourself. Uh, so she left. Um, but the cool thing was me and her dad had a great relationship. And I'm just like, man, I've exhausted every little thing I know how to do. I don't know why I can't get this going. Like, you know, I don't want to get evicted. It, the apartment was under his daughter's name um, and he co-signed the lease. I was like, look, I don't want to get an you know, eviction on your guys' credit because I can't, you know, I got an eviction on mine already. Um, I was like, yo, I need to borrow some money just so I can get out of here. I'm gonna move back to yep. you know Kansas with my family. That was the hardest thing for me to do because I went from I literally made millions of dollars, you know, doing my cell phone repair stores and all that. And you know, just to even ask anybody for any amount of money is like a big shot to my pride, but I had to do it. It was that or I was gonna end up wrong place, wrong time with this music stuff, and you know, <laughs> that could have gone a you know a couple of different ways that you know I wouldn't be here today. So um he let me, you know, borrow money. I moved back into my grandparents' basement in Kansas. Um, that that was that was rough. Um, my dad had just gotten out of prison not that long ago either. So you know, it was like my grandparents, me and my dad were sharing like a living room type setup in a basement. Like, you know, I'm sleeping on the couch, he's sleeping on the bed, like 15 feet away. Just like you know, a scenario you don't want to be in, especially coming from you know what I was doing. Um, so every night I was up at the coffee shops, little 24 hour donut shops, just working, man. I was reading every book anybody recommended to me. Yeah. Uh, I was learning as much as I could. I was reaching out. Um, and again, shout out to Alex Brittingham. Cause you know, the, the one thing that kind of changed what I was doing is instead of knocking on doors, he, he showed a, what's called a value video. And what I did was I learned how to, you know, send videos through Facebook messenger directly to the business. And I got the best success rate as far as like people replying. And, you know, I actually sold a funnel. The first thing I sold was like a $300 funnel. Like I yeah. clicked funnel set up, you know, just put their information in there, 300 bucks. Uh, that was February 12th. The next day I got somebody that was actually, you know, ready to do the Facebook ads and it just threw me off. It was in body contouring. Yep. Had no clue what body contouring even meant. <laughs> I had to learn that whole thing. But, uh, you know, started working with him. Really, like I had all the time in the world. He didn't know he was my only client at the time, but I was just doing any and everything that I could to make this thing work. When he had a problem, guess what? I'm gonna figure out how you know how to fix that. First, it was like leads. Uh, you know, we can't get a hold of these. Okay, let's do a online scheduler so that way they can book. Okay, cool. We're doing the online scheduler now. You know, people aren't showing up. Okay, well let's start charging. Let's make sure they pay on the online scheduler before they show up. Started getting those in there. Then you know, focused on quality. Um, you know, by raising the, the offer to a higher price, started getting better quality people in there, 
took his feedback from the practice side, um, you know, and my experience with the digital marketing world and shout out to everybody in the inner circle that's helped me. Jeff, you know, your course has been amazing. Um, you know, Nick Corm at the time, I modeled a lot of my business after his, um, you know, Christine Seal, David Murillo, all these guys really helped me when I was like in the infancy of my infancy of my agency and just really helped me get it going. But once it worked well for him, he was, you know, very pleased with my work ethic and how we got it to work. He's like, hey, I got a, I got a partner for it, or one of my partners. I'm going to you know, put you in touch with them. If you can replicate these results, you know, this would be a good thing for you. Started with him, started doing well. And they're like, man, we might have something here. So they invited me out to a conference in Nashville where I got to speak in front of 30 um, seven figure earner or higher chiropractors and just give a presentation. It wasn't even like a sales pitch. It was just like how to hire the right digital marketer and make sure you're not getting ripped off type of thing. Yeah, They all loved the presentation. Um, both of the clients that I had at the time vouched for me. They're like, man, we've only been running this campaign for three weeks. He's already had 150 leads and you know, 30 of these people have already come in. Like, and everybody's just blown away. So I ended up landing, I don't know, I think another six or seven clients from that. Once they saw that, they're like, you know, I paid them for those referrals too. And once they saw that, they're like, man, we can send you business all day. And I was like, well, shit, I can, I can pay you guys all day. So, you know, let's figure something out. All right. So before like we go into that, like, oh my God moment, people paid me money and not the first time or second time, but paid you en masse, right? Like, yeah. Up before, like you're on stage up to that point in your journey, all you've really known is like this massive struggle and pseudo failure this whole way, right? Man, like yeah. you tried business, you failed at it. You tried music records, you failed at it. You had to like, like hit rock bottom like five or six or seven times. And the weirdest part is I had to do the same exact thing. Like as you're telling your story, I'm like, like I felt that like that <laughs> inner, like, like you feel like you're complete failure again and again and again. And people don't realize like how fast it turns around. Like you got your first $300 click funnel sale, right? Then somebody paid you for body contouring. And then how long between like your first body contouring client and when you arrived at Nashville for that presentation, what was that like 60 days or less, right? Less. Yeah, it was, uh, it was within 30 days. So, or I guess, sorry, let's say 40 days. Like it took about three weeks to get the program like good. And then as soon as he turned me on to his client, it was like a week after that. They're like, hey, we got an event coming up in 10 days. So I asked my mom, I was like, hey, I need to, you know, can we put this on your credit card? I got to fly out here. <laughs> so, so I want you to keep talking. I have to like leave and then reset my mic, but keep talking about like what it was like uh, saying, oh my God, like I have this opportunity and like how you managed to make it work. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, so I had this opportunity to go out to Nashville and like I said, I just had my first client was spending everything to get these ads going, got that second client. Um, and then I had this you know, opportunity to go to Nashville, which that was one of the most expensive plane tickets I'd ever seen. Uh, so I had to borrow money from my mom, uh, put it on her credit card just to fly out there. Uh, but I had to make this work. You know, I didn't even know what I was going to say. Um, I didn't know you know, what I was going to present on, like, I was nervous, even up until like the probably two hours before, like, I still had no clue exactly what I was going to cover. Mm -hmm. And we, we sat down with the, the doctors that I worked with, and we're like, hey, you know, is this good? What do you think? And they literally helped write this thing for me. Uh, and then, you know, I get up there, and I'm nervous, because I don't even feel like an expert at all in digital marketing. I still like, I wouldn't call myself an expert. Uh, we do really well. But at that point, man, I barely knew what I was doing. So it was like, I'm yep. never talking in front of all these millionaire doctors. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it was the most intimidating thing I'd ever done in my life at that point. And, and your presentation, you weren't coming from a place of expertise and I'm amazing and you should listen to me over everybody else. You're literally coming from a place of saying, here's what you should know before you hire somebody and this is what worked and we can run it for you too. Is that correct? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's like a big learning for everybody on here. Like you can hit the goals that you want and you don't have to have this like baggage of I have to be an expert. Yeah, you could be an expert, but it's gonna take you years to do it and there's always somebody smarter than you. If you really come from like a place of service and saying, this is the campaign, yes, it works, we can get you similar results. It's like, it's just so much easier to have a real conversation because you're just up there and you're just being you, right? You're not pretending to know everything about their business and you're not even like going and, and fighting that. You're saying, yeah, this works, would you like to do it for you too? And you sign six clients from that single event, right? Yeah, it was either six or seven, and that was probably in the course of um, probably two weeks like after that. So like, there was a couple I signed up pretty much instantly, and then over the course of a couple weeks, like you know, the conversations back and forth, them kind of vetting me through like my other um, clients and them talking me up. 
yeah, I signed yeah like six or seven clients. Had my first thirty thousand dollar week very very soon after that, and that was that was crazy. That's, that's when I knew I had something. <laughs> I remember when you went live in the IC and you're like, guys, I just made ten thousand five hundred dollars and I'm stuck in traffic. Like, yeah. it's oh. the weirdest thing. Go on. Yeah. I, I was gonna say I remember that. Yeah, I remember driving to Denver one day. Woke up early, and me and uh, my power partner, we had closed yeah ten thousand five hundred dollars in deals on a trip before I even got to Denver. It was, it was crazy. Yep. It's it's mind blowing because like everybody identifies and understands what it, what it's like to be at the bottom, and you don't understand like how fast you can win once like you just you just change like two or three separate things like like you're doing door to door, you're trying to sell funnels, and it kind of works, but like still at the core, like it really really sucks. But once you just start getting results and trying to solve problems and communicate with your clients. Like you can power partner and upgrade real fast. And I think it's really important that everybody A, understands that, but B, you did something really, really particularly important, which is you're always trying to solve the next problem, right? Like, like if there's not enough leads, you're like, oh my God, who do I have to talk to? What book do I have to read to get more leads? Okay, these leads are bad quality. They're not trying, what am I trying to do? And so what you did is you had people sign up for the higher tier offer, correct? Yep. And then you had people prepay before they show up, right? Correct. And that solved a lot of your low quality lead problems. Is that correct? Oh yeah, that was a big change. And uh, there's also something really interesting, and it's important that we bring this up during like this like this chunk of time frame. Your all of your clients have a really expensive thing that they can sell, right? Like a one thousand or five thousand dollar package, right? Exactly. Yeah. And when your client has that, all of a sudden, all your numbers work. So, did you ever have a client that like didn't have that package? Like they just end up dropping off real fast, right? Yeah, so um, the lady that I sold the three hundred dollar funnel, like the first thing I ever sold on the internet, she transitioned into a monthly client probably sixty days from when I sold her that funnel, um, and she didn't have any packages in place. She was just trying to sell sessions, and that literally lasted like three weeks. And she was like, "I can't do this," and I'm just like, "Well, we need to figure out how to get you to where you can sell higher ticket items because yep. you know getting somebody in and selling them fifty dollar sessions like it's going to take a lot of those. Like you need to sell packages." But she dropped yeah. out really quickly. That's the, that's the recurring theme. So for everybody here who has like client keeping problems, the biggest connection I've seen studying people like Jeff Lopez, people in the IC and people that are like making this really cool transition is that their clients sell expensive stuff. And I think between Jeff, your fee and your client's fee, they just have to sell one client a month and they've paid for your fee many times over, right? Exactly. Yeah. If our client gets one upsell, they, they're going to at least break even. Anything else is gravy and super easy to get a good return for them. Beautiful. I, I thought it was really important that we instill that. But go on with your story. So you land six or seven clients. Are you like freaking out saying, oh my God, I've made all this money. What am I supposed to do? Are you immediately like hiring people? Like when you sign like a half dozen clients, what, what did you do? Yeah, so um, so actually shout out to my team real quick, Ian, Lisa, Yvette, uh, Josh, uh, Andrew helping with the ads, uh, my power partner, Dr. Hoover. Um, when when that happened, I was like, oh my gosh, like it, you know, I, we got to figure out how to one, make this setting up campaigns a lot like quicker and more efficient because it was taking me hours to set up these campaigns and then I signed 10 in a week. <laughs> um, so, so at that point, that was probably around the time I reached out to Josh and was like, Hey man, you know, I got this thing, it's working. I know you're trying to build your agency, but you know, along the way, if you want to learn from what I'm doing and we can kind of, you know, work this together, this will probably help you with your agency journey. Um, and so he started helping me. I was able to get Lisa into more of a, she helped with like actually interacting with the, the leads that we were collecting. Yep. So she was actually helping me book clients uh, or book leads for my clients. Um, so I started paying her to do that. Josh and me started figuring out automations and like, you know, we kind of started from square one. I didn't even know what automations meant probably this time last year. Um, but we're sitting there playing with Zapier, playing with all these tools, just figuring out just how we can make this thing easier. And we actually got, found a way to make our onboarding process just from hours, literally to minutes. Um, so that, that was a big help. Um, so Josh was pretty much full time with me. Um, Lisa was I'd say halftime. She was still working her other job, but we were we were moving pretty quickly until the next big you know set of clients came. Very cool. So I, I think what was important that you just mentioned was onboarding your client, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have to get the photos and get them to know what they're doing, and then there's always a Q and A, and like your clients will always text messages saying like, "What am I supposed to say when I call them?" You're like, "Your business. What do you mean? Like you say <laughs> hi? Like what what are you talking about? Right?" But they always manage to screw it up, and if your client screws up the sales call, they've screwed up your contract with them, right? 
and you yeah. managed to take like like just normal frustrations and anger and and Q and A onboarding and take it from what like a half day to a couple minutes. So can you talk about like how that works, why it worked? what used to be in the onboarding, now that's automatic. Like, what does that look like for Jeff Lopez and the Plus Plus team? Oh, absolutely. So when we were first starting, it's probably just like a lot of you guys that are starting out, like we'd send them an email, we'd say, hey, we need these things. They'd come back with a billion questions, all the same questions. That's when we really start to like notice these trends and like everybody was saying the same things. We we're having all the same conversations, having to hop on the phone, repeat ourselves. It just got really annoying. Uh, and no, no disrespect to my clients, but it was just like, how do we answer all these questions without answering all these questions every single yep. time? Um, so we took actually your, your conversion academy and really just expanded upon that. We created what's called the Plus Plus Portal. Perfect. It's pretty much a click funnels training that goes through every last little thing that we could think of. Like we've set up a Dropbox link in there to where it's like, hey, upload your pictures here. As soon as they upload a Dropbox, we get notifications saying, hey, this such and such business has uploaded their pictures. Uh, we show them how to set up the online scheduler, set up their hours. It answers every, any question that we've got more than once. There's an answer for it on that portal. And if we yeah. start to see new things, we put new videos on that portal so we can not have to answer these questions. Now, you know, we cut our, you know, we were doing like 10 to 15 client calls a week. Mm -hmm. uh, we usually have like two or three unless we have like a busy week for like, you know, new clients. So it's amazing how much like time we've cut off. So you onboard a client, somebody pays you money, right? And you send them an onboarding form. And is it then you give them access to the portal or it goes onboarding form, they fill it oh, out and then magic happens? That. So yeah, it's, it's magic from when the invoice goes out. So we use PandaDocs. If you guys aren't using PandaDocs, there might be something else out there better, but we love PandaDocs. So I don't even have to send the invoices anymore. My power partner, we set him up a ClickFunnels site. He says, hey, they want this package. He clicks a button, he enters their information. It shoots a invoice out to them. It's customized for them. Proposal, invoice, contract, they can literally sign with their finger, pay on their phone. As soon as they pay, comes back to us, we get notified, hey, payments hit the bank or, you know, collected through Stripe. Um, and email from my assistant, Lisa, I mean, it goes out from her Gmail account saying, hey, I'm Jeff Lopez's assistant. We want to get you all set up here. I need you to fill out this client onboarding questionnaire. It's Beautiful. 35 questions. Don't worry, it's not too intimidating. This is just so we get everything we need. And then it gives them a list of things to do. As soon as they go through that and submit that client intake email, that gives us all the email to contact, you know, who's their point of contact for the leads. And we start automatically sending out the portal video. We send out their logins. This is all automatic, by the way. Like we literally don't have to do anything until we hop on a call with a client to say, hey, everything's ready. Do you understand it all? Cool. Yeah. We're this thing on. Um, so we have so many automations in place and big shout out to Joshua Alger. Uh, yep. is, me and him, man, we always just sit there like, man, how can we make this easier? How can we you know, what can we automate next? And we've really just dialed in a crazy system. He's, he's super technical with the, we call it our super zap, but we don't have to do anything. Like it sets itself up. I remember when you were at the mastermind and you were like showing the super zap and everybody was like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> like it, it has single-handedly cut like your throughput or capacity for a client down to like 10%, maybe even 5%. Because all their FAQs in there, like there's no conversation. And the coolest part about having your own like conversion academy or client portable, whatever you're calling it, right? Is mm -hmm. whenever they ask a stupid question, you can say, did you check the client portal? Yep. And now they don't have to ask you ever again. It's the like, it's the most beautiful thing in the world. And the, like the fun part is like, whenever their campaigns bomb, you're going to say like, but did you do what we gave you? What? No. Well, there you go, right? And and that narrative is a lot different than saying my campaign bombed and I'm going to help you fix it. It's literally like I gave you everything and you're the person not taking action, right? Like that that's the narrative in the culture with plus plus, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And then the other cool thing by having the click funnels, we can actually see like in there, like, oh, they watched, you know, this percentage of the, the campaign training. So it's like, man, you watch 10% of the training. We know you don't know what's going on. Like this, this is why you need to watch these videos. Um, just like you said, we, we really much like just direct them back to that. Another cool thing with the Supers app is like all this stuff happens automatically. Um, there's so many conditions set to where it looks like it's us interacting with them. They get emails from Lisa, they get emails from Josh, the back end manager saying, hey, I got this. As soon as they fill out their client intake form, they've already talked to Dr. Hoover, he sold them on the package. Yep. And what happens when they fill that out is a automatic text message from high level goes out from Dr. Hoover's account saying, 
hey, doc, I got your client intake form. I passed it along to the team. Or Lisa said, we got your client intake form. We passed it along to the team. We're going to get working on this. Yes. If, you any, if you need anything else at all, don't hesitate to give me a call. So then he's in control of the conversations. Again, everybody thinks I work for him. Um, so it works out really well. My phone does not ring. Um, you know, my team just manhandles everything. We even send out a gold lettered um, handwritten thank you card that goes out automatically when they sign up and fill out their client intake form. So they get a personalized card, it's handwritten. It, everybody just loves the personal touch that we send with it and it's all automated. So if I understand correctly, your power partner is the one sending the invoice. When yep. they send the invoice, he's not directly sending the invoice, he's going to his own private site, checks the boxes, the package that they bought, mm -hmm. clicks send, and then magic happens. The magic is there's a panda doc that takes the inputs sends it to the client as soon as they pay, onboarding form, high level text message, the emails, like it's it's removed 90% of the conversation very fucking fast. Yes. It's, That's it's absolutely amazing. fantastic. Well, well done, Joshua Alger. Yeah, like, <laughs> well done, my man. It was a pleasure to meet you too uh, in South Florida. Yeah. I, think that's, I think that's really darn cool. And what's even more interesting, by the way, is it, it increases your client's ability to do better with your program, right? Because now, their success isn't dependent upon whether or not you sent that email. Their success isn't dependent upon whether or not their front desk remembered the script. Their success is their ability to just follow directions just like Ikea manuals, right? Mm -hmm. That's absolutely awesome. Um, you were going to say something or no? Oh, actually, when you said script, um, so this is actually something new we're doing, and I actually wasn't going to share this, but this is something huge. If you guys are using high level, um, we've actually automated something new that we're testing and it's working very well. So if a lead opts in and it goes to our high level campaigns for our clients, you know, sending out those automated text messages, we're making our clients call everybody. Um, but it actually pre-populates a custom script for every single client that opts in with their name and information. So they go down, hey, just want to verify your info is correct before we send you these emails. Is it this? Hey, is this the best number to contact you on? And it's customized for each person that pops in there. So now they have a personalized script when they're on the phone. So there's no confusion as to what to say uh, while they're on the phone. It's and, and you look like a multi-million dollar company. Oh, yeah. yeah. When you've got that, like it blows you out of the water. But before we go even further, I want to backtrack on one of these bullet points, which is your simple strategy to get higher quality leads and get more clients on your friend. Because like I'm part of so many Facebook groups and mentoring programs. Like I just enjoy like a high level interaction. And the consistent challenge, the consistent challenge is that it's bad leads and I didn't make my money back in 30 days. And it's like it, it blows my mind to have businesses that are like, it takes them five or six or seven years to get up and running and they demand of themselves that it's gonna take a long time and it's okay to not have it work. But the second they pay you money, it's gotta work immediately, right? It's like, uh, oh yeah. Like, come on, Rand. So, like, how do you have like a strategy of simply getting a higher quality lead as opposed to everybody else who's like scraping the bottom and hoping people show up? So, yeah, so just don't get in that, I guess, uh, rabbit hole and get caught trying to be the lowest offer on Facebook. Like, that's kinda, you know, again, no, no offense to Dan Henry, but like the way he was teaching back in the day, work but now that everybody's doing marketing like crazy like it's not that cool to have a crazy cheap offer um what that does is you attract the right, wrong type of clientele so for instance when i signed my first client he's like you know he was almost done with digital marketing he's like you know i've tried this it doesn't work and i'm like oh well, what kind of offers are you running and really i was like researching for myself like okay what are you doing that's not working because i don't want to do that uh he's like you know i got 37 dollars offers we're doing this we're doing uh we're doing two sessions for the price of one and I'm like, well, why don't we just triple the price point almost? Let's get it as close to 100 as we can. I was yeah. like, because somebody that has $100 is going to be way more qualified than somebody that has the 37 Like 37 anybody can afford that. And you're going to attract just anybody. Um, so as soon as we raise that price point, we've tried everything from 89 to 147 89 is a very good sweet spot for us. But just don't discount your services. If you need to, um, even if you have a low ticket offer, just try to value stack it, but keep the offer as high as possible. Yep. Um, even chiropractors, we're doing some chiropractic stuff now. Um, we're testing and we're not doing the little crazy $21 adjustment. We're doing $49 adjustments and yep. the quality is so much better. Because um, like I said, the people that have that bare minimum to get in there, they're not going to buy anything. Like they're, they, they, might as well, they might as well be on Groupon. Uh, that's the type of client you're going to get. You throw that price point as high as possible to where it's a premium and you really just sell the fact that, hey, we're, a, you know, a, a premier business like we're, we're not in the race. You know, we're not a Walmart. We're an Apple. So um, 
put that price point high, you're going to get higher quality people in there. And those higher quality people generally roll into bigger packages at a yep. much higher rate. So, and that's the other thing, like you kind of hit on earlier, make sure your client has like something like what, what are they selling? That's something you do need to know. I didn't understand that when I was first starting out to like qualify, Hey, what are they going to be buying when we get in there? Like you need to know that because that's going to make your job so much easier. And like, that's also going to help you turn down clients you shouldn't take on. Like the lady that, like I said, I sold her that funnel. She comes, she becomes a monthly client. She pays me. She does like $500 in a month. Like that's awful. Like I felt yep. bad, but it's just cause she didn't have anything to sell. Like she, she couldn't sell a big package. But I got clients now, like I got a $3,000 package that's being sold uh, at one of my southern locations. They did $36,000 their very first month with us. They love us. Like, and it's just because they have these packages to roll people into. We got the higher quality leads. They're good at sales. This thing booms. Like they've already paid for their marketing for a year. Like yep. that's crazy. So the, the most interesting thing that I've learned on my journey is that your clients hate discounts right? Mm -hmm. If you're discounting, they immediately won't do their homework. And because they won't do their homework and it's a discount, they're going to cancel you real effing fast. Oh right? yeah. It's, it's always your fault. That's, that's always <laughs> like, like, like we had a $21 offer and I didn't call back any of the leads and nobody showed up and I'm canceling you. Yeah. And it's like, like everything stems from the fact that your client's perception is that all the leads that come in are poor and bad. And let's just say that they are not, it doesn't even matter. Your client who's under the impression of a $21 offer or a $39 offer just will not take action. Mm -hmm. But if you're coming in and saying, hey, Mr. Johnson, I don't want you to discount. I don't want you to lose money. I don't want these to be bad people. I want you to charge a normal or even higher rate. Let's build a package that you think you can sell. And then let's build a $5,000 package you think you can sell so that you make money from me within the first three or six weeks. How about it? That conversation is so much more better for you and your client than it is about saying, Mr. Johnson, we're going to run a group on discount and hope for the best. Like that's not going to work. Right. And you were the first person to really reiterate the fact that you can have a higher tier program and package on Facebook. And then what happens is when you don't have poor people, your client won't treat you like a bad agency. Right. Oh, and yeah. it, it's entirely like a function of that first offer and then a 5k client. And that's why you've been able to keep your clients for, for a hell of a long time, right? Our retention rates amazing. Like I feel like it's one of the highest in our industry for sure. Like I have clients that signed up and just never left. Like, and they, they're talking about stuff here in six months, we're going to get another location. What do we need to do? I'm like, okay, we well, are already looking at the future. Like, like yeah. this is like, we work, for, like we, we just work together now. We're, we're part of the team. So they, they, they stay with you. That's fantastic. And what, what was your journey about increasing your prices? Did you get frustration, anger? Did you have to like raise your prices real time? Cause like everybody's got like their first tier client. What is that? Hang on. Sorry. Uh, what was that last question? Sorry. He hit the music on accident. Oh yeah. That's where. So like, did you ever have to go through a process where you're like raising your prices? What did that look like when you started your current clients and, and now you're at a certain price point? Are you comfortable saying how much you're charging per client and what that looks like? Yeah. So um, actually, I should have hit on that in the beginning. So I was trying to reach out to any and everybody and I learned that, hey, $1,500 is a good price point to charge your clients. Um, I had a few sales calls, never went well. Um, I got so many rejections and no's. Like I started to learn the questions they were asking. The first client I landed, I actually signed him at $2,500 bucks and like, I decided I was going to charge that. Like when he asked me how much it was, like, he's like, Oh man, it sounds good. How much is it? And I was just, uh, 2,500 bucks. <laughs> like I wasn't sure of it, but he's like, okay, cool. Like that sounds good. And I was just like, what? Um, so, but then that also, that's going to qualify you to have better clients. Cause like the clients that are, this is kind of goes back to the offer. Like when you have a low offer, you attract a certain type of client. When you have a high yep. offer, you attract a certain type of client. Um, so I started really learn, like learning really quickly. The people that had the money and didn't bat an eye at the higher price point, they're the ones that stayed with me the longest because they understood what it took to, you know, play at that level. So they, they, they did the things I needed them to do and they made sure it was good. Um, man, we went for, we had a $2,500 package. Then we had clients that are like, this is awesome. How, um, you know, how can I get more? So I was like, oh, well we have a $3,500 package. And then we just started pitching that. Right. Um, and it was working like crazy. And then what we found is like we had a lot of people asking to transition to that package, you know, after they got comfortable with our system to where we just went away with the $3,500 package. And now we uh, we also went away with the $2,500 package. So we only charge $3,000 now. $3,000 mm -hmm. is our fee. There's not a lower. There's not a higher. 
it actually we're in, we actually ended up making more money now because everybody went to that no problem and then it's just the easier price point to handle like i don't know why that 500 dollars made a big difference but we're closing a lot more clients um with one phone call now yeah. that was three thousand bucks so that's crazy and and when you charge three grand you are giving your power partner a percentage to make them happy and keep sending you business correct absolutely yeah how does that look like for somebody who's like curious about like the jeff lopez power partner process like what does that look like you know what i mean <laughs> yeah so um i believe you know i always preach anybody i'm like teaching as far as agency goes or even like my employees like look you got to pay to play like you got to pay to play at this level and the reason we you know make these rounds as well as we have is one our customer service our you know our machine is well oiled it works well and we have the best customer service in the industry um but the other thing is like you know i pay dr hoover quarter million dollars a year yep. um I, I pay him 20 percent. so if we're selling a three thousand dollar package he's getting 600 bucks and he gets that recurring yep. but he also used to run a multi-million dollar practice and he works for me exclusively now so like um not only are you getting you know the best from the digital marketing side because i'm learning anything and everything we can to make sure you're on the cutting edge of what's working and whatnot um, but two you're getting a top tier doctor that's done what these guys have done he's in the trenches and he did it very successfully yeah. and dr hoover hops on the phone with these clients so like if we get a ton of booked appointments they're not converting packages guess what hey dr hoover i need Beautiful. to do a training transition that like how to get you know more packages sold and that is like game changing for our clients so um you know like i said i pay a lot to my power partner i don't pay just the one-time fee like he literally makes a quarter of a million dollars a year right now just yo, for me. <laughs> yo, Jeff, in less than a year, you went from having to split a one bedroom to paying a quarter million dollars a year and being happy about it. Oh, yeah. I, I, I'd pay more. <laughs> oh, my God. That's <laughs> not. And, and just to kind of quickly summarize the, the, the power partner, there are certain expectations, right? Like the first off is like it's not just a normal referral person. Like it's a power partner. So they're in the industry. They're well-versed. You're paying them a percentage. And there's an expectation of like, when there's a problem, we can rely on your expertise to make a phone call happen, have a conversation, record it, shoot a video, something like that. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. My expectations for him, like he, you know, he, he's cool with it all. Like, especially if like, for instance, we have three people laid on their bill right now. I'm like, Hey, we've sent reminders. I need you to call them. He called, got two of them on the phone, paid their bill. <laughs> like, like he's doing everything. Like he's selling, he's doing trainings, he's doing collections. <laughs> yeah. Like, and he's happy about it. He just moved uh, from Kansas City, Missouri to Florida to his dream house now. And he loves it. He makes more than he was making in his practice now. That's um, it's last year. So, Is there a, a way of thinking about finding a power partner or is it really like an organic process of finding people that you like working with and then just kind of taking it from there? So, yeah. So what I've noticed is you'll find out very quickly who has the potential to be a power partner. Um, the way you look for that is when you sign a client on, one, when you set those expectations clearly and they follow them and you have somebody that's doing really well with your program, that's somebody you should probably look at because, you know, they, they got their stuff down. They understand your system, but then they also understand the other side of your system because your, your job is to get people in the door. Their job is to convert them, sell them, you know, keep those customers happy. So when you find somebody that's doing that and they're making lots of money off of you, that's somebody I want to train every single client, you know, from now on um, that I have. Because like it's like, hey, I can get leads for you. You need help on the practice side. Dr. Yeah. Hoover's done this. He's blah, 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 blah. Let him talk to you about that. And then you just become a resource. So if you find somebody that gets good results with yours, ask them, hey, you know, uh, do you know anybody that you can send my way? You know, are, are you any any groups online? Like just start to, you know, kind of ping them for, you know, information. Because just yeah. like you and I, we're, we're in your group. There's 40,000 people in here. These doctors, they're in groups. There's hundreds, there's thousands. They, it's just like this. So, you know, you, you put your fishing pole out there with them, they're gonna bring you back in some good catch. So. And so when you're coming in to a new relationship uh, with a new dollar-driven relationship, somebody can pay you money, you can either come in as the marketer that is perceived as a marketer, non-qualified, done it before, ain't gonna work. But if you incentivize a power partner, you're coming in and saying, you go listen to, Dr. Johnson or, or whoever my power partner is, listen to him, it's worked for him, and you get access to him. So if we're running this marketing campaign, by the way, the perception is I work for my power partner, right? Yeah, like exactly. you, you get to ask him during either a dedicated phone call or something like that, or they'll call you. And now your value proposition is coaching and a service, 
not a local lead gen, which is all the way at the bottom, right? Yeah. And, and just, just sorry to emphasize on that, uh, one thing we actually have now, we have a $15,000 program that includes a lot of coaching from Dr. Huber. Right. And we've already sold one. Um, we sold one before we even had it because like they rely on him as, you know, he's been such a great resource for them. Now we're like literally like the industry like standard for this type of stuff. We work with uh, Contour Light. Actually, we have a deal with Contour Light. Um, we're actually creating their training institute. So if you were to buy a machine as a chiropractor, you're going to see us training you on how to use it. Uh, <laughs> like we're running all that. So now we're the authority in our lane. Yeah, that's absolutely fantastic. So a question for you is that like, how do you find like, what, what if like your power partner is worried about increasing competition? Like, is that a conversation that comes with a power partner? Or do you have to address that? Is Dr. Hoover, like, was he retiring? So it was kind of kosher. Do you, do you have like a thought process? And like, what if your power partner doesn't want competition? You know what I mean? Um, can you kind of emphasize on competition what you mean? Like, yes, yeah, so like, let's say I've got, so my first chiropractor is Dr. Scott Cohen. He's been in the ICA, yell him to a 5K program. He can't figure it out, right? It's like, yeah. it's just part of his journey, right? He really enjoys servicing people. Fine, mm -hmm. whatever, right? And I go, hey, Dr. Cohen, um, I'm going to pay you 20% send me people who's like, I can't do that. Like, I don't want to send you the guy down the street. Was it ever a problem for your power partner? Or did he just say like, I'll just send you everybody because I'm kind of retiring anyway? Oh, yeah. So so we do like exclusives anyway. So like we won't work with anybody like down the street. Um, yeah, okay. So that, that was, that's never even come up for us. And I guess that's probably because we had that expectation from the beginning, like we're not going to do any overlap marketing. Because that's one thing when we were on these sales calls, like, yeah, we, we're going with this guy. He's marketing for this guy and this other guy in the town. We're getting some of their leads. They're getting some of ours. So we just set that from the beginning. Like, we're not even going to do that. Um, and it really became like, you know, he was going through his networks and it wasn't like the idea he was going to leave his practice to come work for me. It was like, I'm just going to make some extra money. Yeah, I'll help you out. But then we saw the potential and he's like, you know what? I'm actually making more doing this than running this. And I'd rather work from the internet. Uh, so his goal was always to like retire and move to Florida. And we made that happen my first year working with him. Um, so he just saw that. And like I said, it was just a better fit for him and what he was trying to do in his life. So that's something really key. So you offer geographic exclusivity, right? Yeah. So is it like one practice per city? Is it 30 miles? How does that look like? And how do you communicate it? So it depends on the population of the um, city. So and also it is kind of like geographical. So if they're like less than like 10 miles apart, we're going to look at like, you know, hey, what are the areas that you want to target? And mm -hmm. we'll just match up those zip codes and see if there are any overlap. If there is, we're not going to do it. Um, if they're in a small city and we're doing like radius targeting or something, uh, we're not going to do it. So you usually have about 10 to 15 mile exclusivity. Yep. Um, if you're in a super populated area like LA, we don't really, uh, I mean, even three miles is like a 30 minute drive in LA. So there's not really, you know, any issue. <laughs> but so we, we, yeah, we just, just it's case by case, but gotcha. But for the most part, like you're leaning on the idea of some level of zone of exclusivity. So your power partner isn't threatened, your current clients aren't threatened. It just kind of makes like everything a lot cleaner, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Gotcha. They, they like that. They just feel more comfortable with that too. Gotcha. Very, very cool. Uh, a question that came in is you charge three grand. I think you include ad spend with that. So like how does that look like? Do you have like targets internally or do you not include ad spend or what does that mean? So we include ad spend um, and we really just, it's case by case. We've got, you know, our system dialed in so freaking well. We have so much data. Um, we can get some really cheap leads, uh, but we've spent anywhere from 600 to the bare minimum we would spend um, all the way up to, I've spent 1500 in some cases. So it's just really case by case. I'd say average, you know, thousand, uh, you know, a little more. Like I said, we have some yeah. clients who are paying 1500 bucks a month just because they're harder areas to, you know, target. But for the most part, you internally, you say like $3,000, one third is going to go to ad spend. About that, right? Exactly. Gotcha. And that's, that's totally okay to, to do because you're just saying it's $2,000 management fee. And then we suggest $1,000 a month in ads. And so like that just, that's a narrative that makes sense. You just say it's three grand and, and people are happy about it, right? And honestly, we, we don't even really discuss ad spend because um, like we, we tried that in the beginning because I've learned different ways to sell it. Um, what I found out is, you know, people worry about ad spend, like 
they're, they're worried about the wrong things. So like we just kind of communicated is look, we're gonna spend is whatever we need to do to get you results. So if I yeah. have to spend, if I can, if I can spend a hundred dollars and get you results, I'm gonna do it. But you know that's not gonna happen. If I have to spend three thousand or three thousand, guess what? I'm gonna do that. You know we might not be a good fit in a few months. We'll learn that. But uh, whatever I got to do to get you results, we're gonna spend it. Like I said, there's been months where we didn't make anything on a client. Interesting. So does that client who's like kind of skittish and kind of unsteady but business that you still want? Does that client then say, but do you have a guarantee, like 30 customer opportunities, do you guarantee two times return on ads, or do you just guarantee nothing's gonna change if they don't take action? Or does that not even come <laughs> up anymore? It used to come up. So we used to have um, our small plan, we guaranteed at least 30 customer opportunities. Um, the big plan, we used to guarantee 60. Um, like I said, we got too many people focusing on that, and yep. we really just kind of broke it down to like, look, if you have packages to sell, here's how it works. We're gonna generate probably close to 100 leads a month if you get 10% of those in on a very, very, very low expectation there. 10 people are in there. You make close to a thousand off the front end. If your guys are horrible at selling, I feel like you could probably close two, two out of 10 of these, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. What's your package? 3000 bucks. Look, you're already making seven grand off of $3,000. If we can't get you more than 10 people in there, and if you can only sell two out of 10 of them, like it's, we don't even talk about, we guarantee, we just tell them the averages and how easy it is for them to make a return and then everything else is great. And, and you, when, you, when you're having that conversation, you're just yelling at them or do you have like a, a sheet that you walk them through? So I just made a sheet very recently um, just cause the visual aid helps quite a bit. Like we can actually punch in those numbers. Like, look, if we do a horrible job and our conversion rate on these leads is only 10%. And like I said, if you only sell two, here's what you make. And then the numbers yeah. are real right there in front of their face. So we have this calculator, we call it a plus plus client conversion calculator. That thing works fucking wonders. Sorry, language. Uh, that thing works wonders though. Like, you know, you type you, that in, show them. Do you okay. find that like being able to show them hard math, they go like, oh, we get it. And then they don't bitch about non-renewal because it's like they've already been anchored and saying like, look, it's 10 out of 100. They're gonna get two, $3,000 sales. This is what we talked about. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah. So, so my, my experience is like, you know, we were like, Hey, we're getting so many leads. You're going to have this many appointments because our average client gets anywhere from 30 to 50, you know, appointments. Some get less, but most of them are all still profitable. Actually, I think all of them are still profitable um, or at least break even. But what it looks like is, you know, we, just, we sell them on the fact we don't want you just busy. Like ours are yeah. higher quality. Our goal is to get you 10 plus of, like high quality appointments in there. If we get you 10 plus, like I said, at a horrible sales pitch, or if you guys are horrible at selling, you close 20% of these, you're still positive ROI. Everything else is gravy on the train. We, we get a lot of clients that um, they're used to like having, you know, 50 to 100 like appointments at that lower price. And like the thing that we found is like, for instance, um, there's a company that got them 55 appointments, but like they were doing two for the price of one. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, so they did 110 appointments, making like five grand. We generated 54 appointments for that same client. Um, one, one appointment, so they made the same amount of money, half the work. And that's kind of yeah. how we sell it. It's like, look, we don't want you just busy. We want to get quality people in there for you to upsell. We're going to train you how to upsell so you yeah. make more money off of less. We actually have a client, just came back to us, um, went with another client or another company, didn't get good results, came back to us. First two appointments, they made six grand, like in a day. Was that the guy that wanted to pay you like 7,500, like no, but then a yes, and then no, and then yes? Is that, or is that somebody else? <laughs> That's a different one. Man, we've had clients come back to us a lot this month. Um, but one was like real skeptical because he was like, oh, this other guy said he's going to book me 30 appointments because the most we'd ever booked him was 10. Yeah. Um, really tough area to work in. And he was just like, man, I feel like, you know, I'm only making 15 grand off his marketing. He went with another company. They got him 50 or 40 something appointments. He made like, I don't know, close to five grand, like hardly any upsells. First two appointments with us six grand one day like so so your angle is literally like coming in with this sheet showing them the math and all of a sudden your clients are staying around longer they know that they have to do the upsell and when it bombs you can be like well did you follow the conversion academy or the the plus plus four and they're like no no yes yes and that's that's the key to the jeff lopez client retention strategy right exactly yeah. that's fantastic are you comfortable sharing that that client conversion sheet that you mentioned earlier Oh yeah, and again, shout out to Josh. He's got this thing. Uh, you will have to opt in Manny Chat, but we're gonna yep. send you the client conversion calculator in there. Uh, it, it's great, and I, you know, I guess I'll I'll post up a I guess a how to and the agency scaling secrets on how it works. Uh, but it's super simple. I think you guys will all love it. And then you also realize like how easy it is to get your clients' results and set expectations properly. Very cool, guys. If you're interested in 
and getting that, that sheet that you can use to anchor your client for renewals, uh, just type, here we go, Jeff, plus, plus marketing, just type, just plus, plus marketing. <laughs> plus the, there you go. Right. Um, and then we'll make sure you get the sheet so you can like have that conversation with your client and really set expectations. So like, we're going to send you a hundred, 10 are going to schedule and walk in the door. And your goal is to close two or three at a $5,000 offer. Mr. Johnson, what's your $5,000 offer? And then if they have one, you can leverage that. If they don't, you can say like, we have to build that for this starting to work. So type plus plus marketing. If you're interested in that, we'll make sure you're taken care of. Another, um, just another thing on that though, it works for any industry. So like you can actually play with the offers. Another thing that's cool about this is like, let's just say if you don't, you don't have an industry where you can do an $89 offer, you can put in $29 or 49 and it'll tell you how many appointments you have to book for that to break even. It'll tell you how many upsells you have to make for that to break even. Uh, yeah. And then you can play with the numbers, like how many people are gonna come in off the leads you offer. So 10%, 30%, you can play with the numbers and it'll tell you their profit or you know what the break even is. So you know your expectations going into it. You know, one of the, the hesitancies in my head for some reason is like, like what if I don't know the front end offer that I'm advertising on Facebook? What if I'm not sure what should be the $89 offer? Is there like a thought process that you go through to call them on the phone and say, what do you do for 80 bucks? Are you Googling it? Like, how do you know what should be the offer on Facebook for 80, 90 bucks? So what I did, um, I came up with 89 bucks for this industry. Like everybody else was doing a lot less. The reason I came up with that one is my client said, you know, we're trying 37 bucks. We're trying 49 bucks. Quality is horrible. Um, but what I was doing, I was researching the industry. So like on Groupon, Groupon is a great place to see like what prices are working because you'll see like, oh, how many people have bought this? Um, average price point was 99 bucks for three sessions on Groupon. I was yeah. like, I bet I can make that 99 bucks for one session. Um, so just, I would do some research on like Groupon and see in your industry what the types of offers are if your client doesn't know of one. Um, and then, you know, instead of doing like multiple sessions or things for that, basically take that times three, don't make it 300 bucks, just take yeah. one session for 99 bucks rather than three sessions for 99 bucks and try that on Facebook. You're gonna get a different quality client, definitely. Are you, are you using that higher end offer and then targeting in a radius? Are you targeting zip code income? Like how do you make sure that it's, it's <laughs> not a poor person's market, instead it's a rich person's market? What does that look like for you? So Stephanie Sands and I, we, we go back and forth on this all the time. So like, I like both. Um, zip code is probably my favorite targeting method, but we'll test both. Like we'll, we'll do radius and we'll do zip code. And what we do is we tell our clients, hey, you, you're filling out a client intake form for every single person that comes in there. Start putting down the zip codes of like the people that are buying packages. So mm. we can start seeing if those areas are, you know, pockets that we could explore as far as getting more, you know, higher quality people out of there. And then that's some we ask them on the intake form anyways. It's like, hey, you know your area, we don't. Um, what are the, you know, what are the better parts of town that you would want your clients coming from? And we'll, we'll just, we'll find those zip codes. We'll test it against, you know, radius. And a lot of times it will perform better. You know, what's funny is that like that, that kind of enables your client to be more invested and feedback. And you can always land on and be like, you told us the zip codes. Like, what do you mean these aren't your dream clients? All right, maybe exactly. the problems with the zip code, let's do it again the next day, right? And so what's interesting is like I'm in I'm in the South Miami zip code and every single time I run ads of South Miami, it doesn't work. Nobody likes them. It's the, the poor person's market. <laughs> Pinecrest and Coral Gables, it's like a five minute drive. Million dollar salaries, right? Like beautiful, yeah. like it's great. So all, all I'm hearing from you, Jeff, is like ask your client the right parts of town and then just run zip codes targeting to those areas. As simple as that, right? Exactly. You put the ball in their court. We try to put the ball in their court for mostly everything. Um, half, I'd say 90% of the time we get on a phone call, it's quality. It's like exactly like you said, well, you told us to target these zip codes. Like, I don't know what else we can target. Like if this is what you said, the best people are in. So, um, and also, you know, oh, we, you know, we're not making any money. Well, are you following the process as far as like selling them? Oh, well, no. Yeah. Okay, well, cool. Let's do another call about sales. Okay, great. Everything changed. Like, so it's, it usually comes down to breakdown on their end because we put yeah. literally the expectations on everything. So, in their court. so this is the, the, my understanding of like the client's journey and in interaction with, with Jeff Lopez and plus plus marketing and Joshua Alger and the whole team, they meet the power partner who runs a seven figure agency or seven figure business and mm -hmm. says, look, I can set you up with my marketing guy. It's just going to chart cost three grand. Are you in? Yes. I desperately need your help. Dr. Power partner, send me an invoice. I see an invoice and I pay it. And magically their marketing guy 
says, I'm super happy you're coming on board. Do me a favor, fill out this onboarding information. And then they get a text message or I get a text message from Dr. Power Partner saying, we're super psyched for you to see on the other side. And then I'm, oh my God, I fill out all the form. And then I get a text message saying, hey, great. Here's your uh, client portal where you're going to learn how to sell and any frequently asked questions. If he gives about three days, we'll have everything up and running. Oh my God, this is so cool. And I've also seen a form that says, look, the success that I've had with my agency, with my business and marketing in total is like, you're going to have a hundred people coming in or a hundred people are going to say, raise their hand. 10 are going to schedule and then two or three are going to sell a $5,000 program. Can you follow that? Mr. Johnson? I totally can. That's it. It's there's, I didn't hear anything from you about advanced interest targeting or like trying to upsell into a, a $500,000 10-year inner circle exclusive mastermind program. <laughs> I didn't hear any of that. All I heard was have like a completed series of steps to where your client gets results, you set expectations correctly, and your power partner drives that narrative. Is that about right? That's it. Set expectations, qualify. That's, that's it. That'll change your whole life and your whole business. Like you qualify the right people and you set your expectations and then follow it. Easy. Beautiful. And are you experimenting with like Facebook lead forms or click funnels or does it, is it the same and doesn't even matter? It, yeah. I mean, we are, um, we're doing chat bots. We're doing, um, lead forms. We're doing click funnels. I still love click funnels just cause I learned it and it works so well for us. Um, but we are experimenting with everything, but it's not like we're not seeing anything. like, Oh, that's drastically better. Let's shift yeah. everything to that. Now click funnels is still what we love. Beautiful. And are you doing anything like email follow-up or soap opera sequence, or is it just the offer is so strong and you set expectations correctly to where you don't have to do any of that automatic follow-up for your clients? Or do you do that on behalf of your clients anyway? Yeah. Yeah. So we definitely do automatic follow-up because, um, you know, 10% of the leads coming in, that is like a low percentage. What we do to increase that is we have a follow-up sequence. So we're yeah. texting them from the business. Um, this is, you know, through high level automated messages go out and it's just meant to engage. It's not even like, Hey, book your session. It's like, Hey, you have any questions about body contouring or the special? Yeah. Like, you know, we just want them to answer questions. As soon as they start answering questions, we got virtual assistants that will actually go in there and engage with them. So like, they'll actually start talking to them back and forth. People will like, Oh, I just had a baby. Can I do this? Or whatever, but they're going to answer all the questions and just having that dialogue and that, that communication increases your, you know, opt-in or I guess conversion rate of people booking appointments. So, you know, th those can be emails, those can be text messages, but there's about 30 days of follow-up. You know, we badger the heck out of them until, I, I guess badger is the wrong word, but we we're going to contact them until they either say, yes, I'm going to buy or yeah. leave me alone. So, <laughs> so you literally have a person whose only job is to text the leads, Q and A them, and answer whatever questions that they have. Yeah, we have a few. Yeah. So cool. So cool. Very well done. Um, we're bringing this to an end. We got about three minutes left, but is there anything that you think somebody should know, like last chance, like last minute, like the number one thing they should be taking away from the second interview with two Jeffs? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so again, uh, I can't say it enough. Qualify your clients. Like just, you got to qualify them. And I think any like big salesperson will teach you that it's going to make your life easier. You don't want to work with people that one aren't qualified because they're going to have billions of questions. Everything's always going to be your fault. It's, there's just no fun to work with. So if you qualify them correctly, they have these bigger packages you can roll into you, and set expectations. When you set expectations and set them on the low side, don't say what you think you can get or what my best client is getting, like set some low ass expectations because when you exceed those, you look like a superstar. Like, dang, yeah. we did even better on your program. We must be great. Like, and you like set those expectations so low that anybody can hit them. And when you sell them on that, they're, they're going to be happy. Like it's, it's, it's easy. Absolutely. Fantastic. Jeff, it's always a pleasure. I'm super happy to see you grow. Uh, we're going to see you at the ClickFunnels house in about two weeks, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yep. You're, you're going to be presenting at AskCon on more detail, which is so darn awesome. Mm. Uh, you've already presented at the Mastermind, which is cool. And for everybody, again, if you want the client sheet on how to set expectations, get them to renew and, and pay money and, and convert at high rate, just plus plus marketing. Jeff Lopez, it's been a pleasure. Don't hang up, but we're going to say goodbye unless there's a last thing you want to bring up. Last thing I do want to say, um, like I said, if you guys want that plus plus conversion calculator, it is going to put you in a many chat bot. We don't have anything else set up to like blow your inbox up. So like, you're just going to get that. And it will ask you like, is there, you know, one, I want you to give me some feedback on, you know, what you guys want to learn. Cause we want to put out more content that can help you. We're actually going to be working on some more cool things to share with you guys to plus plus your agency. Beautiful. Ladies and gents, Jeff Lopez. See you later. Bye.